Nation, Zach Albaverde and Jordan McPherson coming to you live from Gainesville, Florida. After Jim McElwain's press conference, if you watched our first video today, uh, we tried to do one take and take some uh, questions from you guys. We were not able to see the comment section until after the fact and realized that you guys had left us some comments. So we're going to uh, answer those questions. We're going to give it another go this time. Jordan has his phone going. Uh, so we're going to uh, read any questions that you guys have from the previous video answer those and if you have any additional questions you can leave them right here in the comment section below and Jordan and I will get to them. Uh, as far as Jim McElwain's press conference today, not much news came from it. Uh, James Robinson is going to be suspended for the season opener uh, as we all expected. Ventrell Miller is still out as well. He was already suspended. Both of those guys sided for marijuana last week. Uh, Jim McElwain has not named a starting quarterback. Doesn't look like he's going to. Uh, and as Michigan Week finally gets here, Jordan, uh, you know we're in the dark with a lot of things about this football team. But nonetheless, there is excitement. There is a lot of people looking forward to this game. And I know fans are looking forward to it. So let's uh, let's get to some of these questions. Okay. The first question is from Robert saying, "Is it possible that Flores' defensive line outplays Michigan, mainly Taven Bryan?" Yeah, I mean I, I think so because. It, for me, this game is going to come down to which young defense steps up and plays the most or plays the best. And when you look at Florida on their on their defense, yeah, they lost a lot of starters. And 14 in two years is a ton of turnover. But when you look at the guys that are stepping into those starting roles now, they are not inexperienced true freshmen. They have some guys that have gotten some some starts under their belt that have played in big games. And I think should be ready for this moment. Now, I, I expect Florida to have some growing pins, not only in this game, but throughout the year. But I do think that their defense, and especially their defensive line, uh, should be able to to have its way with this Michigan offense. So uh, I do think that, that you should see Florida's defensive line. Now, Taven Bryan has gotten some hype. Mm -hmm. Great feature about him last week uh, that, that came out. So he now steps into that Caleb Brantley role trying to fill his shoes, and, and he's got big ones to fill for that first game. Yeah, I've been high on Flores' defensive line since fall camp started. CC Jefferson is honestly one of my favorite guys. I'm expecting him to have a breakout year this year. And on the opposite end of the of the edge, you have Jab you have uh, Jabari Zuniga, who mm -hmm. came on, had some flashes, but didn't was able to sustain it for the full season. And then Taven Bryan hasn't shown up in his first couple of years, but it's because he's been behind John Buller and Caleb Brantley and yeah. Joey Ivy, and now it's his turn to show that. Hey, I can be just as good as these guys. Yeah. Well, and you know, a couple of years ago, Bullard was in that was in those yeah. shoes, and Caleb Brantley was in those shoes, and then those guys became, you know, the guys on the defensive line. So now it's you know Taven Bryan's turn, the Wyoming Wild Man. We'll, we'll see if he can live up to that nickname. All right. Next question is from Matt. Who will be Florida's player of the game on offense? On offense, it's a great question. Uh, I'm going to say Dre Massey. Uh, we got to meet with him today. I know that there's a lot of X factors, a lot of guys that that. Fans and certainly media are intrigued to see in this game on the offensive side of the ball for Florida. But when you look at who's going to line up, who's going to start, to me, I know what outside of the quarterback position, what I'm going to get or what I'm going to see from most of those Florida players and certainly fans do as well. I don't know what I'm going to see from Dream Massey. And, and the college football world certainly does it. The Michigan Wolverines don't. And I think that he could be an X factor not only in this game, but like you've written before Jordan throughout this year they really think that he could do big things in 2017 so I would say for a Florida win he could be a guy that really stands out and I'm gonna go with tried and true Jordan Scarlett no matter who the quarterback is yeah. no matter who the receivers are Florida's gonna need to establish the run game and you're gonna do that with your bruiser back your proven guy the guy who's been known to break tackles and wear defenses down if Jordan Scarlett can get off to an early start, a fast start, mm -hmm. and just wear Michigan's young defense down and force them to respect the run, which Florida hasn't been able to do the last two years. They've been last in the conference each of the last two years. If Scarlett can get off to a good start and open up the defense a little bit, that will help the passing game. That will help the quarterback with some play action, some read options. Just it will help expand the offense, and you do that with Scarlett, Scarlett on the ground first off. Yeah, well, and they need to lean on their ground game in general. I mean, not just Scarlet, but they have to be better in that aspect of their offense. Ranking last in the SEC in rushing offense is not going to cut it this year when they have that uncertainty at quarterback. They need that run game to be able to support that guy, not 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 hurt him. Next question is from David. What's the overall health of the team? I would say that they're pretty healthy, yeah. Jordan. I mean, they, they really haven't had any major injuries since Marcel Harris. I mean, certainly they got guys banged up and. 
I think that knee for Martez Ivy is, is going to be a, a bit scary or something to monitor. I think the health of Kylan Johnson, but more so the time that he missed, yeah. will be key. But I think that Florida's probably in a good spot right now. They're, they're in a good spot. I'd elaborate on Kylan a little more just because of the lack of depth that Florida does have at linebacker. Mm -hmm. Kylan was expected to be that strong side linebacker, nickel back hybrid, and he's missed the last two and a half weeks. Yeah. That's a lot of time to miss when you're supposed to be a starter and you only have four proven linebackers on your team. Yeah, and they're counting because like, they're yeah. really counting on them. Exactly. So that's forcing Jeremiah Moon to step up a lot earlier or for Florida to go in nickel, which they were trying to avoid because of the young DBs they have. Mm -hmm. They only have Nick Washington Duke Dawson as seniors who have been proven in big games. They wanted to go three linebacker with David Reese, Voshan Joseph, and Kylan Johnson. Johnson, and then sub out Kylan with Jeremiah whenever they needed to in pass situation, rest situation, depending on how they wanted it. But now it looks like they're going to have to have some court, yeah. some of the younger freshmen out there a lot earlier and a lot more often. than. And they're going to really need Jeremiah Moon to step yes. up, too. All right, next question. David also has how's Martez Ivy status. We touched on that a little bit. He has the same knee injury, the yeah. same. It's been hobbled him a little bit, but it hasn't kept him out too much. And there's no way to keep him out of the game on Saturday. No, yeah, and, it, and, it, and the coaches seem to at least say and that it's something that they feel like he can play through, but any time that you're missing practice, it's a concern. Now, is it precautionary or is it because you're really having some issues? We'll, we'll, we'll find out on Saturday with Ivy. Yeah. Next question is from Chris. How's the running back situation? Well, I think you mentioned it, uh, Jordan. I mean, it's going to be the Scarlet Show first and foremost. I think that you're going to see P. Ryan really emerge as that second back and build off of what he showed as a freshman, but maybe take it, his game to a next level this season. I, I think for what happens after that, the rotation is a bit up in the air. We haven't heard a lot about Mark Thompson, don't know where he stands on the depth chart, certainly in the rotation. He's, you know, he's had an up and down career here so far and certainly an up and down year last season. We've heard nothing but positive things about the freshman and how much playing time does that lead to how many carries does that result in that remains to be seen but I do think that we're going to see both of those freshmen play whether that's actually in the run game and mop of duty on special teams as a returner they're going to use those guys I think in a variety of ways I think you're going to see both of them are Darius Lemons and Malik Davis start on special teams but the bulk of Florida's running production is going to come from, I think, Scarlett and Pete Ryan. Yeah, definitely. But again, Malik Davis, has he's blown me away this fall camp. I didn't really know too much to expect from the two of them, especially since Florida had three guys returning. But the way that Malik Davis has flashed, he's shown some pop yeah. throughout camp. He's thrown, he's shown that he can run the big boys. He, not, he may be a freshman, but he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So I can see him being that, that typical change of pace back that – Florida really hasn't had much of over the last couple of years. And what they were looking for in the class, in this past recruiting cycle as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, James asked, is Coach Mac nice? <laughs> uh, Jordan? I mean, I haven't had a problem with him yet. I mean, he's typical head coach. He's going to tell you what he wants. He's If he doesn't want to give anything away, he's not going to give the information away. But from the off the field, away from the media setting, he's a great guy. Yeah, I mean, he's a nice guy, uh, but yeah, he's he has mastered the art of talking a lot, not saying anything, but so have a lot of other coaches. Hey, Darius Tony's going to be starting the Wildcats as, as the basically what he was joking Tony, at tonight. Man, he's got to just do it now. You, you got to really go full goal with it. So, yeah. uh, Richard asked, "Are we recruiting well?" That's your both there. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to start doing a weekly Facebook Live. Um, hopefully every Wednesday I think is going to be the goal. So make sure you guys tune into that if you if you guys are recruiting fans. And uh, But, yeah, Florida's recruiting is going well. They're top ten class. You know, we saw what all their commits did in week one. Some of their offensive players really standing out. Matt Corral throwing over 400 yards. He had the 98-yard touchdown. Channeling his inner Austin Appleby. Uh, you know, Jamar Chase had an amazing game. Copeland had two touches over 100 yards. That that catch that he had it was mm -hmm. Percy Harvin-esque. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the guys that they have in the class are really good. Where the class stands nationally and in the SEC, uh, Florida's in great shape, and, and they have a chance to really challenge for certainly a top five class, I think top three potentially. All right, next question we have is from Mike. Should the offensive line be a big difference? Well, certainly Jim McElwain is, is hyping it up to be yeah. and, and, and thinks that this unit is ready to take – the next step and that's something that he was really looking forward to in this game particularly because even though Mich Michigan is young defensively up front they got some some real deal pass rushers and 
for a offensive line in Florida where you saw a lot of those same guys that are going to be playing in this game that were true freshmen, that didn't have a lot of experience, and that really just could not hold their own against Michigan in 2015. McIlwain was upset with the lack of toughness that they showed and physicality and wants to see how much better is his offensive line now? How much better have those players who saw action and started against Michigan in the Citrus Bowl, how much have, has their game developed? Now, we've heard all offseason throughout the spring and now in fall camp about how Brad Davis has really brought a coaching style that has taken this group to the next level for, as far as an attitude and just approach to their position. But for me, it's more physically. I, I want to see where their body's at. I want to see how much they have improved from getting a year under their belt uh, because they're going to have to bring their A, a game against Michigan. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I just, I've seen this offensive line the last two years. Two years ago, McQueen's first year, they were last in the country in sacks allowed. Last year, they were, I believe they were 12th in the SEC, 13th in the SEC in total sacks allowed. I just, I know the group's improved. I know it's, the continuity is important, but I need to see it in a live game, in a live setting before I buy into the hype that they're going to be the quote unquote strength of the team, yeah. which McQueen has been saying since the spring. Mm -hmm. If this group is as improved as they are, Martez Ivy, if he's healthy, is going to be one of the best left tackles in the league. No doubt about it. Jawan Taylor is going to be one of the best tackles in the, in the league, potentially in the country, yeah, by think, next year. I think he's Florida's yeah. best offensive line. Definitely. TJ McCoy was that lightning bug. He impressed me in the last four games of the year. I think having a full camp under his belt with the first team will help. Fred Johnson, Brett Hagee, they're the wild cards to me. I don't really, I can't really gauge too much with them yet. Um, it's, it's a question mark. It is a question sure. mark. And then you only have one true guy behind them in Tyler Jordan with experience right now. So if you have an injury or two, this goes from what's going to be your quote unquote strength to, oh my goodness, we're scrambling to find a quality fifth guy right now. Yeah. And I think for Florida, too, the other thing is that, Jordan, you mentioned playing consistently, playing at a high level. For me personally, I've seen them do it. I mean, they, they, at times against LSU, just dominated them up front. At Georgia, they've they've looked good. Certainly, some other games they've had, they've done well running the football. For me, it's the consistency. Yes. Uh, can you do and and not just, hey, how does the offensive line fare when they go up against linemen from Florida State and Alabama and some of the better opponents on Florida's schedule? That's not, at least in my opinion, as alarming as some of the other games when they go and play a cupcake team or a team that we all view as an inferior opponent, and Florida has trouble and struggles up front yeah. blocking. That, I think, is a, is a bit more alarming when you see that, and we have seen that from Florida the past couple of years. So that, as much as anything, can they come in week out, week, week in, week out with that attitude uh, and play at that same level you know, every, every, every game? Definitely. Uh, next question is from Derek. Do you really think we'll see multiple quarterbacks? Yes. I, I definitely do. I mean... McElwain has basically alluded last week that all three of the main guys are going to play and then throw Tony in there as a potential wild card guy, yeah. wildcat guy. He's starting, Jordan. Come on. He started. You're not, you're not just throwing yeah. him in there. He's starting. That's McElwain's joke with that. Dre Massey even said that. Dre Massey even joked that he played quarterback in high school. He might be in the battle. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Dre Massey said, I heard KT is going to be the quarterback. Now, everybody's <laughs> on the Tony train, and I get it. <laughs> But there is another quarterback on the roster with, with KT. And this is KT. I'm just saying. I'm just Texas saying. Forever? The great white hope. <laughs> Texas forever. Don't, don't count him out. But yeah, I mean, look, this is this is uh, this is what Jim McQueen wanted. Yeah. So that you know, everybody not knowing what's going on. Certainly with with Michigan not announcing their quarterback. Why, why announcing why would, a roster? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're not going to announce, announce a roster. Why would McQueen announce a quarterback? I think that's how he's approaching this. Next question, Richard, is the stadium in Texas big? I haven't been, so we're going to find out. <laughs> I know they have a big jumbotron. <laughs> uh, any news if the move, if the game will be canceled or moved because of the hurricane? No, no Arlington so. is too far away from the Houston area, which is being infected, and it's actually the hurricane shifting a little bit east, more towards the Shreveport, Louisiana this area. Guy. Meteorologist so, <laughs> over here. <laughs> Guess I'll be the weather man. I'll be the weather <laughs> report guy. I'm not going media now. But, no, there hasn't been any discussion about it, but it looks like it's still going to be full go for Arlington. Uh, yeah, McQueen didn't mention anything today yeah. about <laughs> weather concerns. Uh, uh, from Justin, what freshman do you think will make the biggest impact against Michigan? Mm. Uh, probably a defensive back. Mm -hmm. um, probably Marco Wilson. 
Marco Wilson, Sean Davis also. Or Sean Davis, the yeah. two of them. That I would mean, be my two picks. Yeah, Marco's locked down the nickel corner side scenes, which they're going to be using a lot, especially if Kylan isn't 100%. And then Sean Davis has had 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 the opportunity to rep with the first team for the last two weeks, mostly because of Nick Washington's injury. But Sean's looked good. I've been thoroughly impressed with yeah. him. He's shown that he can hold his own. So even if he isn't starting, he's definitely going to be that first safety off the bench. Well, remember, cornerback and really defensive back in general was their number one need in yeah. the last class. So it's no surprise that they've counted on those guys, that they've given them the opportunity to run with the starters, and now they're going to get their chance. Yeah. And on the offense side, you got Tony. Who might be the quarterback, as we're joking with again. There's no, there's no might. Yeah. There's no might. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tony, you know, if, if he does get involved in some capacity at the receiver spot or if a trick play or something like that, or if he does, I do think he'll – they're going to run some wildcat at some point. I, I'm not sure when it will be. Um, I do think you're going to see some of the other quarterbacks more. So, Tony maybe, but I would say those, those two DBs that we mentioned. Yeah. Uh, next question, uh, do you believe from Daniel? Do you believe Coach Jim McElwain, Coach Jim McElwain's confidence in this Gators team is promising? Yeah, I mean, I, like we mentioned with our Zaxby sound off, when when he's coming out and saying we're going to kick the door down Atlanta and we're going to beat the heck out of Michigan, those are not typical Jim McElwain comments. That's not a guy. That's not what he likes to do, and that's not what he did his first two years. The fact that he's willing to say that about his team, whether you buy into it or not, or you think it's just you know, fan hype or, or Gator Club talk. Uh, the fact that he's willing to put it out there and know that it's going to make headlines and he's comfortable with it and willing to stand by it, in my opinion, I think it says that he feels that this is his best team because he's never talked trash like that before. Yeah, I have to completely agree with that. Cause, I mean, like we said in the sound off, the first year when they faced Ole Miss, Ole Miss was supposed to be the team that came in and kicked their tails in. And McElwain was fine yeah. with letting them – follow that narrative, even though he was probably fully confident in it. And, and then you get LSU last year, where you have everything about they're scared to play scared. LSU. They're scared to play, and then they go in, and after they win, Macklin goes, oh yeah, this was a home game for us. We're still undefeated at home. And then the basketball game last year, or during the offseason, right. where he says, we're going to make it, not just make it back to Atlanta, but we're going to kick the door down. And now saying we're going to beat the heck out of Michigan, McElwain, now that he's in year three, he's confident. He doesn't have to worry yeah. about the expectations of coming in right away and bringing him back to Atlanta because he's done it twice. Mm -hmm. So now he's already made it there. Why not up the ante? Yeah, I, I think that the fact that, again, that he's willing to say it shows you what he f feels about this game. I, I think that the fact that they've had this time to get ready for Michigan, so much that's gone into it, the recent history, the comments, the back and forth with him and Harbaugh seemingly about the roster and the quarterback naming. It's going to be fun in Dallas. It's definitely going to be fun. Next question is from Cedric. Who are your top three player, top three key players to the offense this year? Felipe Franks. Um, Felipe Franks. Hmm, that's a good question. I would say Felipe Franks, the Michael P. Ryan, and probably Josh Hammond. And the reason why I'm saying those three guys is I think that those guys are the future. And I think more so they're going to have really prominent roles in 2018, if not this upcoming season, especially Franks if he is the starter. So, what, you know, what, what, I don't know what the exact question was, but for me, for guys like... Antonio Callaway, Tyree Cleveland, the tight ends, their their top offensive linemen. I know what I'm going to get from them. I know what to expect when when they play, and how Ford is going to you know benefit from them being on the field. It's the other guys that I think that need to step up, and if they can, those are somebody that Ford is going to be able to go into next season with and build their offense around. And I'll tag on those a little bit. I call more T.J. McCoy. I mean, he'll have him for at least one more year yeah. too. If you can have your starting center have a rock solid year yeah. this year, and then going to basically having a year and a half going into next year. That's going to be a solid guy. But if we're going for the success this year, I'm still going to have to go with Jordan Scarlett as that lead back to yeah. open up the offense. No matter what he's been, I've been talking, raving about him since before fall camp began. Just once he was able to set, separate himself from that four running back conundrum that McElwain was hoping would succeed at the beginning of the year, he just he took off. Yeah. He dominated LSU. He had, if I'm right, he had six straight games with a touchdown at one point in the middle of the year. And he knows how to get the yards after contact. And if you can get that to set up your passing game, 
regardless of who your quarterback is, that's going to help. Yeah, and when he comes into the year as the guy, there's yeah. no you know four man rotation anymore, so that's going to help him too. Yeah. All right. Next question is from Mike. Any comments on the new uniform talk for this game? No, but Florida did put out a video yesterday and looked like white helmets and. And it, was, it looked like blue, but that might have just been the background seeping into it. Well, my wife thought it was orange on blue, which I've never seen I before. Have, I have not seen that. And I, I don't know if Florida's ever worn that uniform combination. Not in my lifetime. I, I'm almost positive that they haven't. More mind games? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we'll see. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I don't think they're going to do anything too crazy for this game. But I think it's going to be something unique because it is in Jerry World. Yeah. Another question from Cedric. How excited are you about Coach Shannon running the defense? I think it's a great fit. I I think that it was the only hire that McElwain yeah. could make. I, and that's not to say that somebody else couldn't have came in here and did, done a good job. But when you have somebody of Randy Kent, Shannon's caliber on staff, the players have a rapport with him. He has the track record that he has. And he's already on your staff, a, a name that recruits know, a name that players know. I just think it really, really would have hurt Florida to go any other direction. I don't know if they could have hired somebody that was more qualified, honestly, uh, and that knows this defense and this personnel as well as he does. So I do think that uh, it's 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 going to be a good situation for Florida to have him as the D.C. as long as he stays. I do think that this is his last stop before he becomes a head coach again. So hopefully for McElwain, he can have him around for one or two more years. Uh, but I, I do think it's going to be a, a great hire. And... If you were ever in a year when you lost as much talent as Florida lost Randy and you're having the <laughs> turnover that, that Florida's having, to have Randy be in charge of it all, uh, it, it probably makes McElwain sleep a little bit better at night. I have to 100% agree with that. Randy Shannon is, he is one of those top guys to be your defensive coordinator. Even if he wasn't at Florida, he's a name that, even for people who follow college football, even very rarely, he's a guy who's known. Yeah. He had he has a track record of successes at DC and Miami. He's showing he has he's had the head coaching experience, so he knows how McElwain he's yeah. been with McElwain for two years now, so he knows a great point. exactly what McElwain is looking for and the answers they need. So that just helps him that much more. All right, well let's take uh, got time for a couple more questions. Uh, if you guys did not get your questions answered, we'll are, we, back are, are we still on the, the last one too? No, these are uh, all uh, new. Okay, ones. okay. Yeah. If we miss it, we'll make sure we jump back in there and. Uh, and get your questions, but uh, we got some writing to do. Oh okay. yeah, last one for us is from Nick Mack. Uh, any idea who the quote unquote fast rookie returner is? The fast rookie returner? Which, from what I was able to figure out when Mack only talked about it last week, it was CJ Henderson. Oh, it's, The freshman defensive oh, back, he's... Track star. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, it's CJ Henderson. He, go look at his Florida track high school profile, they, you know, that, to me, was one of the reasons why he, he was so attractive as a recruit. And I know a lot of football junkies that really pointed that out to me as well because he had the size. He certainly comes from Miami. He's got the pedigree. He's gone against the talent. But his speed, I mean, he runs. I, I cannot remember what the time was, but he ran a really good 100 time as a senior. That was something that the staff really liked that he brought to the table because he also has the length to go along with it, and they feel like he can not just be a cornerback but somebody that can make plays in the return game. So C.J. Henderson is that guy. Make sure you, uh, you uh, look out for him, number five, and obviously look out for all, this, all these Gators. Uh, we are here, Jordan. Game week has arrived. Five days away. I know, man. Uh, we're looking forward to it, and we will be back with you guys later on this week. We will do another Q&A uh, after Jim McWayne's press conference, and, and he ups – updates us on where things are at with the team. I don't think that we're going to get a starting quarterback named, but uh, nonetheless, we will continue to monitor it, uh, build it up as we as we lead into Saturday. Stay locked with seccountry.com. Jordan McPherson, Ryan Young, and myself will have coverage of this game throughout the week. Also, we'll have our recruiting coverage, Jordan's daily piece, all of our pieces that we do. Uh, we really appreciate all you guys watching, listening, reading. Uh, we do it for you, and this is the time of the year that we've all looked forward to. So we'll be back with you guys again. Uh, until next time, take care.